Alright guys, so uh, I have taken the Zorlon Canon and rewritten a firmware for it, and I'm going to demonstrate it for you. Uh, it's not complete yet, these guys don't do anything yet. Uh, the mix outs don't do anything, and the seed doesn't do anything, and these guys don't do anything. So, I'm still working on a lot of that, um, but the basics are completed. So. I'll show it off. Let me restart this thing real quick. So what this does is it allows you to set up patterns on each one of the uh, outputs, and it works a lot like the original firmware, where I can hold the output select and select a new output. And you can tell that I've got on this guy, I've got just a uh, four to the floor pattern. This I've got offbeat four to the floor for the like a, a hi hat. Sorry, a snare, I guess you probably do. Um, this would be hi-hats, and this is just the testing pattern. Um, if I go down here to the next row, this is just a breakbeat kick drum, and then the same patterns here, and then a four to the floor, because I didn't know what to put there. Uh, so if I come back here to pattern one, then I can move this cursor through and set bits by pushing in on the encoder. And then unset them if I don't want them. Uh, and then when I put a clock into this guy, it'll step all of these patterns. Put a clock in here, it'll step all these patterns. So if I take a basic clock out of this Dixie and shove it in, you can start to see the pattern move. And it's kind of annoying because the cursor blinks and this the, the step position moves, so it's kind of annoying because you can't really see, but once you get used to it, it's okay. Um, then the next trick is to take a gate out of that and run it into an envelope. So right now I'm going to run it into the Quadro, or the IntelliJ Quadro, which then triggers one of the VCAs, which then passes a uh, signal through. So, take that guy. Oops, that's the wrong one. Hang on a second. Dude. Make that a little bit easier to hear. So I'm triggering the Quadra and the VCA, and it's taking the output of the PDO sending it to the airport which is turned off right now and just going out to my output. So then if I speed this guy up, slow this guy down, then that all works correctly. And then I can go through and still set patterns. And I can also change the length of the pattern. To 16 down to one step. Um, I'm planning on doing a tie mode so that I can tie the notes together, tie the gates together I guess, and then I'm also going to do a um, something other, something else, I'm not sure exactly what else I'm going to do, I, I could do two other modes, this is one mode, and then I could have both these lights off and have another mode, so I'm still thinking about that, right now this does nothing. Um, I'm going to have these maybe change the gate lengths instead, so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. Oh, I was going to do divisions of this master clock so that I could do interesting division patterns coming, into, uh, coming out of each one of these based on the clock and the division. So that all works. Um, I don't have any drum modules, so bear with me. Um, Back to normal pattern again. Oh, 
Oops, my light is off. Cool. show you that the uh, gates are not tying right now. I'll go over here. So, yeah. Um, I'll show you how put B. So uh, that's about it right now. I'm probably going to set up um, seed to be the either the restart or the run. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm planning on having the frequency knobs maybe control, well, control the in, an internal clock so I don't have to use an external clock. Um, kind of like how the original firmware is. And then I'm also probably going to try to use the mix outs to actually place samples on each one of the channels. So I'm going to try to load a kick, a snare, a hi-hat, a closed hat, and maybe some toms in to the firmware. I have a whole bunch of memory left, so if I can load enough samples in there, then, I'm, then I might make one of these modes a sample selector for each of the channels. Um, so that I would be able to go back and, you know, change which sample I wanted to play. Um, I don't know if that's actually going to work, though. I don't know if I have enough uh, clock speed to really be able to, uh, I'm sorry, CPU speed to be able to dump out uh, multiple channel, uh, well, the four channels of audio out to the mix out. But that's my hope. Um, I'm Still planning on doing something with the range buttons. They're not doing anything right now, but I have figured out the range buttons. The analog inputs are the only thing that I really have to dig into pretty heavily. Um, but I should be able to use these for a completely separate thing. So if I wanted to have this be a clock and this be a gate length, or this be a clock and this be a gate length, and then the CB being, I don't know, uh, sample select, that might be fun. But uh, I still need to figure out what the best uh, design is. Uh, so all the source code for this is basically free. I put it up on GitHub. Uh, I'm going to provide a final hex file so that people can put this onto their module. And I'm also going to provide a new faceplate. I'm tentatively calling this Zorlon Gate. Zor or, or, sorry, or Zorlon's Gate. I'm not sure. Uh, just because it's now a 